Hey guys, this is Magpie. Today you're bird watching with Magpie. So today we're going to be looking at Metro Exodus. So this was revealed at E3. And uh, if you're not familiar with Metro, it's a post-apocalyptic uh, based on a series of books and takes place in Russia, mainly in, as the namesake implies, the Metro. So uh, basically the series of uh, tunnels and subways that were designed to withstand nuclear holocaust. And uh, in the game, there's a lot of... Uh, not only various factions that you run into, but also mutants. And uh, there's there's some interesting uh, concepts that are brought up as well. So overall, it's a pretty fun, exciting romp and uh, mostly action based. So there are some, uh, you know, some story elements in there. Uh, but the most recent one here, um, Exodus. So in most of the Metro games have been pretty linear, like usually when you approach a room, you might have, or, you know, a room as in like a segment of uh, the story area that you're working through, you may have a couple of options on ways you can go about things. Um, in Exodus, we've seen some hints that, and they've said that it's going to be a wide open world. And they said that it, it, it still seems that they, uh, it's going to be directed and that they've said that basically you're going to be exploring the world uh, through the different seasons. So there's going to be some form of progression. And uh, to boot, uh, you'll be doing this on a train. Uh, let's see here. I believe it's called the Aurora. So it's this heavily modified steam locomotive that it seems like you'll be uh, probably traveling through the various areas. Like It's probably going to be like a, uh, a way to proceed to the next chapter, or maybe to the next season or something. We'll see. I think it'd be awesome if it were mobile-based, but there's there's not much implying that. And, you know, whenever they say, like, oh, it's going to be this, is this, you know, it's marketing. So you got to kind of uh, temper your expectations. But um, so it definitely looks to be open world. We do see uh, the character pulling out a map. Uh, we do have this train. They are saying that it's open world, which is definitely a bit of a departure from what we've generally seen in Metro. Um because that was the thing, you know, Metro always had this really beautiful world that you can only really explore a tiny bit of. Uh, this sort of, you know, beautiful dystopian apocalypse. Um, and now we may actually get to, you know, go out there and explore it, which is pretty awesome. I mean, that's a thing. Uh, so there's inevitably going to be some comparisons to Stalker. Uh, Stalker, uh, similar um, in a lot of ways, you know, post-apocalyptic uh in all the ways that matter, uh, in Russia, dealing with mutants and hostile bandits and all this other stuff, uh, very similar. But the big difference was that Stalker was this very big, open, breathing, living world. They really nailed that. Um, and uh, Metro was a similar theme, but always a more directed experience. So now Metro is having this big open world with a lot of the elements that it had previously. So we may see some pretty cool stuff there. Um, now, along with that, they do say uh, combat and stealth are elements in Metro. And now we've seen that before, but like I said before, in Metro, you'd have a room and you'd have some options on how to deal with that room. Generally, you might be able to sneak around some engagements or get a better way to flank an engagement. But uh, I mean, that's the thing in an open world. The idea being is that you you can pick and choose engagements. You can decide whether or not you want to engage this group or not. It's not simply approaching a problem with multiple solutions it's straight up determining whether or not this is a problem that you want to deal with or not uh so that'll be interesting it might be uh, a lot more open in the design of the game and um they do say that there's going to be like oh you can choose the fate of some of the people like not everybody will survive eh, i mean come on a lot of games claim that we see like sometimes it's literally like an a b choice like oh this dude fell in the rocks and this person's slipping off the cliff which one do you rescue kind of thing it, you know marketing so it, it sounds kind of significant it may not really be uh they do say that there's weapon crafting and i recall in uh, the older metros there was there were some bits like you would find but it, it's not weapon crafting as you might see it in most games now where it's like you you go out you collect the resources you use those resources to craft the weapon uh in metro I seem to remember, because it's been a little while, I think the last one I did was uh, 2077. Uh, but it was like you would go out and sometimes like you would have some stuff for a weapon. And then eventually you would come to basically this point in the story where pretty much regardless, if I recall, your character would find some bits and kind of slap a weapon together. 
technically, yes, you are crafting a weapon, but it's it's all scripted. It's not like you went out and gathered the resources or got the blueprint and then made this weapon. It's just that you hit this part in the story and your dude throws this thing together in a little cutscene. Oh, boom, there you go, new weapon. So, uh, on the optimistic side, this game sounds really awesome. Stalker fans, because Stalker, uh, the Stalker 2 was canceled a while back. And Metro's the only one, the only game out there that's really had a very similar theme. Stalker fans may finally have something to scratch that itch. Uh, and the most optimistic um, ideas for this game. Because open world, that similar theme, uh, crafting, exploration, stealth, uh, having some degree of story elements, and possibly even this sort of roaming base, uh, the, the Aurora, um, pretty interesting. Also, Artyom is back, who is a character from the previous Metro games. Uh, now, on the pessimistic side, it's, it, it could end up being pretty similar to the previous Metro games, which is not bad, per se, but it could end up, from what we've seen in the trailer, yes, the world looks big and open, but realistically speaking, if you look at it, it's like there's, you know, a, a handful of areas you can run around in, and then the rest is sinkholes. So is it an open world? It looks that way. Is it actually an open world where there's like a, a lot of places to go and things to do? Not really, because you're still kind of limited to corridors of space that you can actually traverse. You can see stuff, which is nice, but you can't actually do anything in those places that you can see. So technically it would be open world, yes. Practically speaking, it wouldn't really be what you would expect from an open world game. So. Well, I have to wait and see on this one. It looks like it could be uh, a really huge jump, potentially, for the Metro series, going from a, a pretty linear uh, experience to much more open and much more... Because uh, that's the thing, is that a linear experience only lasts so long. If you make an open experience, you know, Far Cry, you know, other games of that nature, there's a lot of them out there now, but it's like Far Cry and then... Uh, Ah, oh, man, Ghost Recon, Just Cause, uh, just off the top of my head, you know, there, there's loads of games now out there like that. And uh, it could be, you know, on on the most optimistic side of things, it could be ending up something like that. But pessimistically speaking, it could be uh, Metro, but with some cooler maps and a few little characteristics thrown in, maybe. Once again, we'll have to see. This has been Totally Legit Science. Magpie. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to see more of our videos. Leave a comment. Let us know what you want to see.